We have a Troy Belt Storm 2420 snowblower here this morning. Customer brought it in and said that it won't start. We're going to check it out and figure out what's going on and get this thing fixed up. First thing I like to do is check the oil. Make sure there's no gas mixed into the oil before you try to start anything. This thing has two different drains. It's got one at the bottom. Uh, to check it down here, all you have to do is take it off. If it's leaking out a lot, that's excess oil. It's about right where it should be, up to the bottom of that ledge. You can also check it from the top. And this one just pops up and out. It's a different design and it's got hash marks that show you where the high and the low are. Now, if you check this and it's got any gas smell to it or if it's really full, you do want to drain all that out and we'll want to address a carburetor issue before we were to go any further. At this point, there's no gas smell. The oil level's good. I'm going to check the gas. The gas looks clear. Now, there is a fuel filter in this tank and it sits basically straight down. where the fuel line is right there. If you take that fuel line off, it sits into the tank going there to the right. Besides the not so easy to access fuel filter over there, everything else is all kind of right here. Spark plug, spark plug wire, primer, your key has to be all the way in. Got your choke to the left. Let's see if we can't get this thing to start or get it to do something. Doesn't seem like we're getting anything. At this point, we usually check the spark. We've got a spark checker here. Makes it nice and easy. Looks like I'm getting good spark. If you don't have a spark checker, you can use a 13 16 or a 21 millimeter, either spark plug wrench or deep well. Uh, socket to remove that spark plug and check it on this We usually use a BPR 6 ES to replace it But if you've got anything spare like this laying around you can also pull the spark plug Boot off and hook it to a different spark plug and you can hold it to the side of the unit with a rag This is if you don't have a spark tester handy or have one available and you can actually visibly look to see, we can see that spark in between there. I like to use a rag just so you don't get shot. Be careful when doing this. Nice and easy way of doing it without a spark checker. That is handy though. Doesn't want to go back in there. It doesn't seem like there it goes. Again, we've got nothing out of this, even though we've got spark, which means it's going to be either a fuel issue or it's not getting any fuel whatsoever. You can test with a little bit of carb cleaner down the spark plug hole while you've got the spark plug out and see if it fires up. If it fires up at that point, you know that what you're missing is fuel. If it wouldn't fire at that point, you would know that what you would be missing is compression and you'd want to go ahead and take the valve cover off here and make sure the valves were coming out the same amount of space and make sure the push rods weren't bent don't think that's the case here this thing's pretty new there's just a few 10 millimeter screws holding this thing together there's two longer ones on the top one shorter one in the side and then we've got another one that's just a little bit longer that goes into the front Short here, a little bit longer, and the two long ones at the top. After that, this pulls just up a little bit, and this comes kind of out and away. It was tucked in there, out and away, and then we'll pull the primer line off. I like to just get it out of the way a little bit better. Now that we're to the carburetor, we can run the same test with some carb cleaner or some starting fluid just into the intake here. Now it runs just as long as we have carb cleaner or starting fluid for a fuel. Let me choke it, see if I can't keep it running just for a... Yeah, they like to do that sometimes. A 
We know that it fires up if it gets fuel to it. Carburetor or fuel related issue at this point. Again, we're gonna use our 10 millimeter. We're gonna take the bottom bowl off and see exactly what's going on, what kind of stuff we have in the carburetor. And I think we're actually just gonna take the carburetor off as a whole at this point. Instead of messing with dropping the bowl. Sounds like it's probably pretty gummed up. If you're not getting spark for any reason at this point, you would want to go ahead and remove these two tabs from the kill. That isolates the starting system and you can check your spark independently without any of these wires being an issue. If you're not getting spark at that point, you know that the issue is gonna be a coil. So you can go deeper in there. Fuel line I usually like to grab and kind of twist in order to take it off. We'll pull it up and out. And then we're gonna put it just on a quarter inch fuel line T. And then that fuel's definitely nice and clear. Don't really see any issues. Two 10 millimeter nuts left, holding the carburetor on. Now we can take the boot from the front off, the adapter, and it's got a gasket on the back side. If that's ripped, you can replace it. Most of the time, snow blowers aren't in extremely dusty environment, so it's really not that big of a deal. They don't have an air filter anyway, so it's just pulling straight from atmosphere right on the other side of this piece. Now these spacers can come out of this plastic i've seen that before people will lose them make sure those don't pop out this carburetor can just be pulled straight back if it doesn't come loose from this plastic piece real easily you'll probably want to hold that in place you don't want to break the seal between it and the block if you don't have to if it is broken a lot of times i like to replace that gasket also in this case it isn't once you get out all the way you can grab the spring and pull it straight up and off. And then the governor linkage comes straight up and out. Now the carburetor will just slide directly off. And we have it free. To clean this carburetor, you really don't need much. A wire brush and pulling a loom out of it will work just fine. You need a 10 millimeter, of course. And then a screwdriver that's got a good end to it to be able to get the jet out of the middle. We'll take the bottom nut off. It's always a good sign when it's got rust all over the bottom of it. And there's nothing in the carburetor at all except for a lot of gunk. Crystals everywhere. This thing is in pretty bad shape. Now that that's off, we can take the needle in the seat and the float out. So that's just a pin, it pulls straight out either side. And then your float will pull straight out. In this case, it's not wanting to pull out and that's because the needle is actually stuck in the up position causing this. Now if we take it and we grab it and we twist from side to side and pull it out, that's gonna free it up. If you try to force it down without doing it that way you will ruin it you can see just all that green all along there the thing's in pretty bad shape when we remove the main jet which sits straight down in here again a screwdriver that fits tightly in there you don't want it to have a lot of space to be able to strip that brass out when we're doing this, we'll push real hard in as you're turning. If you don't do that, a lot of times it'll strip that brass jet and you won't be able to get it out, especially with one this gummed up. Once you back it out as far as you can, you can just lightly tap on it and that main jet will come out. Not stripped, not damaged in any way. 
And then there's the emulsion tube that sits further down in there. You can see it through the middle right here. If you take your screwdriver and just pry lightly down on it in the middle, it pops straight out. Again, that sits back in there this way, but that's what we were seeing is this tip up through the middle and we just pushed it straight out. We've got the throttle stop or the idle stop, which doesn't really matter because it's always on full throttle. And then we've got the pilot jet up underneath. Then you just want to pry that out and they're pretty tight. And it's this jet that sits straight through here. If this jet is not cleaned out, it'll cause surging real bad also. Now that we've got everything removed, we can start to clean this thing up. We use an ultrasonic cleaner to clean it all. We're gonna throw it in there first and then we'll bring it out and kind of go through the cleaning process. The gasket off the back did come off in this case with it. It feels pretty stiff, but it's not horrible. It came off halfway clean. It could probably be reused in a situation like that if you were in a pinch and needed to get this right back together. But this is one of the most common causes of surging also because if there's an air leak here, the unit will never run right no matter what. Let's gather all this stuff up. And what we might do on that bowl is just grab another one that we've got sitting around and go ahead and replace it because that thing's in pretty darn bad shape, I would say. These parts over here to the ultrasonic. Now this we use a solution of simple green and water. Ooh, it's hot this morning. We left this carburetor in the cleaner for about 10 minutes. Got a lot of the stuff off and the rest of it kind of seems like it's pretty easy. So we're gonna take this and just kind of work it over. Scrape all that ethanol and varnish and gum off of there. does really soften it up a lot, but it does not take care of all of the issue having an ultrasonic does it, even if you leave it in there for a long time. These help pretty good to get some of this stuff off, especially once it's softened up by the ultrasonic. You can see even with these nylon brushes, it's just kind of coming right off. The inside's probably gonna be a little bit more difficult. It's coming pretty good though. And I'm just working around the seat here, all the way down in. This is where the needle was stuck. You want that to be 100% clear down in there. Otherwise you'll run right back into that issue. Need some carb cleaner. Now a lot of these do actually have a screen beyond this that sits about right here. And if that gets a bunch of stuff in it, sometimes it'll clog up and you won't notice it. Blow some carb cleaner back through it. You can also use compressed air. It helps a lot to get all this stuff cleaned out. Use whatever you have available. Now this is extremely bad down in here. That's, I mean, it's just really bad and the metal's actually bad underneath it where it's eaten away at the metal itself. So I'm gonna replace this with a different one. If you are in a pinch, you can clean this up you know, put it back together, but that metal's just gonna keep eating away and eating away, and you're gonna end up with a issue very in a very short time. I've got just one I pulled off. You know, we'll just toss that in for the customer, along with the bottom. That's just got some, little bit of something in it. We'll go ahead and replace those. Again, you can clean them up real well. You can see how much this side, it looks like most of it came off of that side, not so much. Any of this that you do not get off at this point is just gonna flake off at some point or continue to build up. And it's gonna be in your jets or clogging up your needle and seat like, like it was before. 
You can also replace the carburetor if it's real bad. You know, we do that a lot of times. It really depends on how bad it is. This one's kind of borderline, much worse, and we probably would have just went ahead and replaced it. This carburetor is pretty expensive though. I think this one runs about a hundred bucks since it's one of the newer ones that nobody's made an aftermarket or anything of yet. Now your main jet, you wanna be sure that this is 100% clear down through. You should be able to see a perfect circle on the inside when you're done. I like to clean it 100%. Just scrape on both sides. Get anything off of it that you can. It's never gonna to hurt to and this is just a, a light brass or a, or a light steel of some sort. You don't want to use anything too heavy, something thin wired. Just kind of poking down in it and moving everything around. You can use at some point, if you have torch tip cleaners, you can use those. A lot of times they work well to, to push down through. Something like this, just, yeah, see that was real clogged. Just get all that stuff out of there. Big buildup of ethanol. It's not gonna run right if you don't get that completely cleared. I can see a perfect circle through there. Everything's clear, I don't see anything else. No other buildup, maybe just a tiny bit right here on the inside. Any of that you can get out. Looking good. Then we can go to the emulsion tube. So clean the outside all off real well. It looks pretty clear actually, doesn't look too bad. These holes should go all the way through. You're poking something through on one side to the other. That one looks a little bit... Should be nothing stopping them. Now the top ones are a lot bigger than the bottom ones. If these are clogged, it's not going to run quite right. Even if... Even if most of them are free, if some of them are partially clogged, just not gonna get a good fuel spray in the emulsion too. Throw one of the bigger ones and kind of clean the inside out real well, just in case. Again, I don't think there was really much in there. See, that's got a good fuel spray. Now for down in here. Just gonna take, I think one of these tiny ones and kind of work my way around and poke on down through the center. Down through the center, that's what you should see. That should be able to go straight through all the way down to the plastic. Again, if that's not properly seated, or I'm sorry, if that's not properly flowing, properly opened, you're going to get surging out of it. Even if everything else is completely clean. Clean that out real well. Good. And then we've got the needle. You wanna pay attention to the rubber tip. If it's getting to the point where it's mushy at all, or if it's not a perfect triangle, or if it's separating from the metal, you will want to replace that or replace the carburetor. A lot of times the kits for these are pretty pricey and it's better to just replace the carb as a whole, especially if it's in real bad shape. I'm just cleaning all this gunk all the way along off with my fingernail. You can use a wire brush, but you want to be careful not to damage the rubber. So it's kind of hard to get close if you're not using something real soft. That's good. Spring is, <sighs> spring is all set. I'm going to blow through here with some carburetor cleaner. Just all down through. Again, kind of free everything up. All these jets through the front.
clean up the whole top down through again and then there are a few holes off to the side you can clean those they almost never get clogged there's four four holes straight over here and then one there almost never get clogged but it is a possibility i've seen it a few times make sure everything's free and it is and let's blow this off and put it back together Looks a lot better than what it did to start with. We've got the spring, we're putting it on, and then we're kind of holding that back and we're pushing from the bottom to where the spring is on the bottom side of this plastic and the rest is on the top. Should not be sitting kind of half cocked like that, it should be all the way to the side and sit kind of in that notch, just like such. Needle is good again. Looks like I missed a tiny, tiny little spot. Okay. See how freely that goes. It goes very freely. That's what it should do. If it's getting stuck at all in any way, shape, or form, you'll want to make sure that that's all cleaned up better because it's just going to do exactly the same thing to you. Just getting the rest of that gunk off of there. Now you can test it by putting a little suction with your lips over this while the bowl is up and see if it holds a suction to your lip for a minute. If it does, you know that it's sealing. Put the bowl back on. Goes the opposite of the where the fuel intake goes out, but first we'll need to put the emulsion tube back in. Again, the short piece goes here. Then your main jet goes in, nice and clear. We'll screw it back down in, don't go too tight. And then make sure your washer's on the bottom. Go ahead and tighten it up. Pilot jet back in. It fits with the plastic. There's a flat spot here. Flat spot fits straight down in there next to it. And then it just pops in. And then you've got your throttle stop. You just want it normally about a quarter inch past where the aluminum is. Again, in this case, it's not even used, but. We're ready to put this thing back on. We replaced the intake gasket with a Honda 16221 dash zh8 dash 801 that's what we normally use they seem a little bit thicker and they are a little bit cheaper carburetor just slides back on like it came off as we're going in we don't want to go all the way but we do want to pay attention where the governor rod's sitting you kind of put it at the top you can see where it best slides down in once it's in the notch like such, you can grab the spring and pull it over and put it in. And then the entire thing slides back. Again, on these intake gaskets, if this seal is broken and this plastic is moving back and forth at all, you'll want to replace the seal behind it also or the gasket behind it also. That's not the case on this one. I'm going to blow this tank out a little bit. The fuel looked fine and smelled fine. He said he uses ethanol-free fuel, but I'm not sure. Maybe he bought it used or something to where it had ethanol fuel in it before. I thought it was pretty dry. Reinstall the fuel line. 
on the inside of that tank you can see if you look down in there at that fuel filter you can see if there's anything plugging that up pretty easily in this case adapter goes back on the front like such and two 10 millimeter nuts go back on you want to make sure that everything's free at this point that should have good action everything should be able to move free nice and tight put our primer line back on and then we'll rotate this line will go through and then you got to line up here with the carburetor and also on the other side this has got to be lined up in the notch right here so that all kind of sits together got the two in the top and the other ones I didn't put this gasket back on. Yes, I know. You don't need that gasket though, as I was explaining earlier, it's completely pointless in this situation. Well, besides the smoking off, all that stuff that has been sitting on top of the muffler for so long, everything's working properly, running good again, and we got this thing taken care of just in time for this snowstorm that we're about to get for the customer. So thanks for watching. Hopefully I taught you something that you didn't know and helped you out. Like and subscribe.